Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a real use case which came to us from uh, one of our customers. They actually were a large insurance company that said, we've got this problem where Salesforce needs to get access to Lotus um, uh, Domino uh, databases, which exist that we've got you know, in our on-premise network. But there's no way we're exposing these things uh, you know, without some kind of uh, policy layer to the outside world. We became that policy layer. Layer 7 secure span gateways were put in a DMZ, and policies, you know, a little more complex, but not unlike the one I just showed you, were actually stood up, which actually govern access to make sure that only Salesforce users, only authorized Salesforce users, can actually get access to those key um, uh, domino databases. And then that data, that domino data, is actually integrated into the Salesforce panel and that. So all of a sudden, their users, their road warriors that are out there all over selling insurance and, and making deals, actually have that visibility through the Salesforce console into this entire range of data that normally they would have had to replicate out in the Salesforce. It's a very, very powerful kind of one-two combination. So here's the second use case, which is the problem of moving your applications out into the cloud, which is going out to something like Amazon EC2 and actually standing up a virtualized application out there. This one gets really interesting because, of course, you can't just take a hardware gateway or anything like that and move it out into the cloud. So the key here is to use an, you know, yet another product line, which we call Cloud Protect. And we think of this as the gatekeeper uh, in the cloud. So in other words, it's something that you move out there and also resides out in the cloud. It's a virtualized cloud gateway, which has all of the same functionality that a hardware gateway does, except it can run out on Amazon or any one of the other cloud providers. And the neat thing about this, really, is that it gives you that layer of control over the applications themselves. So where you've surrendered certain kinds of control, in other words, you're not you know, worrying about low-level firewalls and, and uh, rules, or you're not worried about um, um, you know, router tables and things like that, because that's exactly what you've given up to uh, a cloud provider. That's, that's what you're paying for when you pay your... Um, you know, a few cents an hour or something for uh, CPU cycles. You're paying for them to deal with all that infrastructure stuff that you don't want to have to worry about. But the fact is, you still have to worry about your applications. So the place, the one place you can reassert control, and the one place it's logical and, and sensible to actually reassert control, is up at the application layer again. And that's exactly what secure span gateways can do. They can give you that level of control that you need you know, from your sort of centralized um, network operation center, and you can control access to your cloud applications. And it's done simply by literally putting one of these virtualized cloud-based secure span gateways in front of your applications that exist out there in the cloud. There is n you set things up in such a way that there is no way to communicate in or out of that um, application that you put out there, let's say your human resources, your HR application, without going through the virtualized secure span intermediary. The powerful thing about that is, all of a sudden, you've got full policy control, authentication, authorization, threat detection, SLAs, you know, routing to different instances if you have, you're, taking care, you're taking advantage of things like elasticity. It's a very, very powerful model. You can actually literally set up encrypted tunnels between a pair of secure span gateways, one in the, your own DMZ, in your on-premise network, and one out in the, in the cloud. If it sounds like a classic DMZ, it's actually not. It's a lot more sophisticated. Because in this case, the tunnel is actually subordinate to the entire policy system. So it's a tunnel which also deals with authentication and authorization. It's a tunnel which also deals with threat detection. It's a tunnel which deals with the SLAs and the rerouting of, of um, messages. Find me a conventional um, VPN that does that. The fact that all of this is controllable means that you can close up the potential vectors for attack between, let's say, a compromised application and your on-premise network. Let me explain. In a lot of cases, things like VPNs work very effectively where you've got trust balance. Let's say you've got a data annex uh, where you're doing a lot of processing. You have the same security model in your home base as you have out in the data annex perfect place for a VPN tunnel. Makes absolute sense. Because really, when you think about it, the VPN is just basically, you know, simple rudimentary authentication and then, you know, cryptography and integrity. That's about it. It doesn't restrict, you know, control and access between different point-to-point -point applications or services. So if one application falls on one side, it really has full access into the, you know, home base. It can get access to anything. 
But that's okay if you've got a, a balanced security model, if you, you essentially control both ends of that tunnel. But what if you have an imbalance? What if one side of that has a different security model, a different security policy? It's run by different people. That's the case in the cloud. And that's a terrible place to put a VPN. Because what if for some reason one of those systems out in the, uh, in the cloud is actually compromised? You've just opened up a whole tunnel for the cloud to get access right into your home base. That's a disaster. You can't do that. I mean, that, 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 that's a tremendous compromise into your whole security model. The reason something like what we're advocating here is much stronger is that what we do is we restrict the tunnel completely under policy control, which means that essentially every single transaction has its own policies. So let's say an application is, is compromised out there in the cloud. The only access that application has is to its entitled connections, in its entitled services. The vectors for attack all of a sudden go from everything you know, in the on-premise network to only the things, only the services that that application is actually allowed to connect to on a transaction by transaction basis. And every one of those transactions is actually subject to threat detection, audit, alarms, all sorts of uh, unusual activity um, monitoring. So you can see how the vector for attack suddenly becomes much, much more narrow than what you get with a conventional VPN. And this is the strength, really, of the whole cloud protect idea. It's a way, way more sophisticated, much more finely grained way of, 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 of creating a VPN, but also actually just guarding those systems out in the cloud. So what I'm going to do is turn this over to uh, my, my colleague, Karthik, uh, who's going to talk about some very particular use cases and that, that they've done, real-world scenarios out in, uh, um, in, uh, uh, with their customers using some of the Layer 7 technology. But here's the thing I want to leave you with. Don't turn your back on SOA. The cloud should be inspired by SOA. The cloud should be a logical evolution of SOA. We should take these concepts, these kind of hard-won best practices, both in how we uh, you know, build our systems, how we build services, but also the infrastructure and the technology that's actually developed over a number of years around things like SOA and take these out into the cloud. See cloud as a logical evolution, a logical um, place to actually move in your um, uh, network. So bear with me for a moment. What I'm going to do is, is uh, um, uh, walk the tightrope, essentially, of uh, of um, WebEx and see if I can actually manage to pass this off to um, uh, my friend Karthik here. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, thanks, Scott. I'm here, Karthik. Hello, everyone. OK, just a brief introduction about myself. Hi, I'm Karthik from Tori Harris. I head the SOA and Cloud Computing Center of Excellence. Tori Harris is a software service provider in all major areas of distributed computing. SOA and Cloud Computing Services are one of our key offerings. OK. Now, let me directly jump on to the set of slides. OK. Scott, if you could make me the presenter, please. Yeah. OK, thank you. OK. 